Hello, my name is Daryl Robert Schoon, and I am absolutely honored to be here once again with Reverend Betty Tataleski, the founder of Tucson's Temple of Universality. A, it's not a religion, it's, it's, a, it's a temple that's dedicated to the worship of God, of spirit, and it acknowledges that there's truth in all religions. And it's appropriate that for today's subject, we are going to talk about India. And Reverend Tataleski has been there a number of times. And so here we are. Hello, friends. It's good to be with you again. I just, my, um, my soul just feels good when I go back to India. And of course, you don't have to make the physical trip. You can go there in a peaceful place, uh, and you can choose your own place. But for me, <clears throat> it's uh, often India. And I think uh, I would invite everybody to come with me in the spiritual voyage, because this uh, month uh, and it heralds um, a new epic or a new era. People are talking about 2012. Actually, a lot of people have been demonizing 2012. I couldn't understand that, why they would pick out this particular year, uh, just because some uh, Mayans uh, <clears throat> had a wheel, you know. They probably didn't find the next one for the next year. But anyway. <laughs> series one. <laughs> series and, one, and Series yeah. two was in three feet away. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyway, uh, one thing we do know uh, that we remember each year, um, that the year is going to be exactly as we create it. It's going to work individually for then those uh, there was something Jesus said, you know, that which you fear will come upon you, and we've certainly seen that. We create a lot of wars because of what might happen. But anyway, and we know war starts in the mind of people. But um, Jesus said, resist not evil <clears throat> in Matthew 5, 39. And uh, the Buddha said, don't push the river. And um, it's, it's so... Uh, it's, it's such a good thing. Don't push the river. And we're thinking about the Tao, you know, the, the, what we call the river of consciousness or the ocean of consciousness in which we live and move and have our being, and we call that God. And then the, we know it's love because God is love. So, you know, if we get back down to the basics of it and remember who we are, where we are, the responsibility that we have, and then we can determine to have a wonderful and, and very beautiful, prosperous, and helpful uh, new year. <clears throat> so with these thoughts in mind and, and um, the way the politics are looking and all of this, and so fear is so rampant. And so I, I go back to India where I learned some lessons. And I'm reminded of those lessons a lot. Some of them reoccur to me in my life, you know, uh, like a boomerang, you know. When was the first time you went to India? 81. 81? 81. And what was your experience when you went? You, you, you know, this is when you really started traveling, wasn't it? it well, I had traveled in, in, uh, the, in the service, you know. You had we, had Japan, lived, yeah. we had lived in different places yeah. around the world, but certainly... Um, I, when my life changed in 79 and yeah. I went into a, walked into a spiritualist church and as they say, into reality. Yep. And, uh, into reality. Into, That's perfect. Yeah, into reality yeah. and off of this uh, false uh, identity that you have. You yeah. think you're only human. You hear that. People say, well, who do you think you are? You're only, only human. human. Spirit says, That's in incredible blasphemy. blasphemy. Yep. And as a matter of fact, this one we were talking about, Cardinal Newman, yeah. uh, this one who was just made a saint, you know, was one of the early teachers, spirit teachers of mine. He had been in spirit quite a long time at that time and was very, very wise. And he said, you know, Betty, if there were such a thing as a sin, which there is not, he said it would be the denial of your divinity. Mm. Mm. Uh, because he says, you know, even uh, in the priesthood and becoming a cardinal, and now he's a saint, uh, he said, you know, we were not taught uh, the Bible in exactly what Jesus said, because what he said was, ye, ye are gods. gods. 
and he says the temple of heaven is within you. Well, th all of those classes uh, were not given in, <laughs> in mainstream Christianity. But what I love about India was not theory. It was spirit, mm. and it was the feeling mm. of, of India. Mm. And so um, I thought about that today. I'll just take myself back to India. When my heart, mind returns to India, my heart returns to peace. The sights and sounds, the perfume smells, and all my troubles cease. The wisdom of the Buddha seems to fill every heart. And in that ancient country, I seem to play a part. Philosoph philosophies and cultures weave a tapestry of love through a culture steeped in wisdom with the heart of a dove. The spirit of the Muslim flows in the Christian and the Hindu. Through the temples of the Parsi, they include me and you. The cobra in his basket awaits the playing of the flute like the coiled kundalini in our spine at the root. The melody, O pilgrim, in the chant of the Om reminds us we came to earth to find our way back home. Wow. And that's, that's the feeling beautiful. I always think of. And I appreciate that spirit puts my thoughts and spirit into poetry and gives it to me, allows me to read it. But then, you know, the father of spiritualism, Andrew Jackson Davis, and he'll keep in, on, in every incident, keep an even mind. And that is, people really don't understand how it will keep you from the foibles and troubles and sometimes horrific things. They really, uh, I wish that we could, um, exp people could understand that higher consciousness keeps you out of the uh, out of the devil's lair as it were but you must do it yourself as again the great messiah said as a man thinks in his mind it is and so if we could um, bring to people's attention wake them up to the idea that you are totally in control of your life and yeah, Betty, yes that reminds me you know, when Jesus said, because he talked about overcoming the world. Yes. And people go, well, what does that mean, yes. overcoming the world? Yes. And, and I really think what you just said speaks exactly to it. Yes. Because the world of appearances is out there. Right. It is threatening. Mm -hmm. It looks like you live only to die. Right. It looks like that you're separate from everybody else, that, they're, that you're at the effect of a world and of forces that you have no control over, and the fact that you're a victim. And it makes you sick. It makes you sick. That you're it makes getting you afraid. sick from outside Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. It's just coming in at Instead you. Instead of understanding that this is your temple, you are creating yes. it with your mind. Yes. And that's what he meant when he meant, yes. when he said overcoming the world, is to hold those truths right. to be true, that right. you're created in the image of God, That's what they that say. the temple of God mm -hmm. is, is within, within you, you, that ye are God's itself. That's right. And as a man thinketh, so it is. And you know, I loved India, and the people, not only are they, were they incredibly just spirit, but they were so humble. Mm. And they said, you know, we really admire you people who come over here and and uh, and study and this and that, but we don't do that. And they felt guilty. <laughs> we don't. We don't really kind of have a religion. <laughs> That's right. They were just all these Westerners are coming over, meditating. Yes. Oh my God. And, and I said, home. well, how do you start yeah. your day? Well, we just go in and and you know and sit in our lotus position before our little tiny altar here, and we breathe. And, uh, and we feel good, but we don't do all that study and then hard stuff that you people now the Westerners do. were flocking to India. Oh, my God. <laughs> so anyway, it wasn't what I learned in an ashram. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It was the people uh -huh. of India. That's good. And uh, I learned, I, my, my spirit teachers had told me, you're going to learn so many lessons, but I didn't know it was through ob observing mm, the people. people. You know, and um, so I, one of the lessons was this, don't push the river, okay. you know, yeah. don't push the river. So 
every place we went, all over India, uh, Nepal, so forth, we had, I had these lessons that I observed that the people were so incredible and we were going to to Del, to uh, Agra okay. to the uh, Taj Mahal okay so we um, go into the travel place and they have uh, lots of uh, tour papers you know the pamphlets here so it takes us a while the three of us and we choose one and it's going to take us three days to go to Agra it's 90 miles away <laughs> <laughs> It's 90 miles from Delhi, All right. and it's going to take us three days, because it was, you know, like everybody got to have a piece of the pie, you know, uh, okay. and we need to be there. Okay. You know? All right. So anyway, so we finally choose one, okay? We get in this little, um, like, Jeep affair, and um, we go, um, there are about, th I think, three or four other people with us, you know, maybe. In a group so, tour. Yeah, a little group. Yeah. There's about 10 of us. Okay. And um, so we um, go about six blocks. Nobody has said anything. Okay. And then the driver uh, gets up, <clears throat> takes his uh, little pamphlet thing, little tour thing, tears it up, and he says, you can tear yours up. No. He says, because <laughs> we've changed. <laughs> We're not going this way. <laughs> but then all of a sudden... Now, what's the reaction of the 10? Well, everybody wants to know... Where are, are we, we going? going then? But nobody knows Hindi, okay? <laughs> so we're, you know, we're stunned. Uh, okay. And uh, so they started asking then, where, where are we going? going? Yeah, where are and we going? Where are we going? But all of a sudden, he couldn't speak any pidgin English, English anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we ride, we travel, you know, we're going in this <clears throat> oh, for several hours. <laughs> For several right. hours, we could have been to the Taj Mahal <laughs> yeah, in right. that, in in that, that time. Mm -mm. No, we went up through Jaipur, and we went all over the Red Fort. Uh, but Fortress you had no idea where you were. We had no idea. And he was telling us, and we were having a great time, yeah, okay. but we didn't know where we were you going. Won. Okay. All we right. just wanted to go to the Taj Mahal. <laughs> right. So anyway, after <clears throat> about... Uh, five hours, okay, and it's getting a uh, little dusk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we pull into a place, uh, and it says uh, it was the largest Bengal tiger preserve okay. in India. All right. And there were fourteen Bengal tigers okay. in there, and um, in a real jungle, a real jungle. So they weren't in cages. No, no, they just were they in were there in somewhere. There. <laughs> and we went in. Okay. And of course, you know, we're the only people in there. Okay. Um, and we, it's getting sundown. Yeah. So now it's time for all the animals to eat. Okay. Okay. Well, we start through there in this little Jeep and, um, and on either side of this light little rutted thing, there are animals. Okay. They're water holes. Their water yeah. holes have been cre created for miles and miles through that preserve, yeah. that jungle, on either side, and the animals are all coming in from the jungle. Yeah. And it was interesting, too, because that law of attraction always in yeah. action. So the giraffes were here, and wow. the alligators were here, yeah. and the these were yeah. here, and all the... And you're in this little... And butt, I kept butt. hoping I didn't see a Bengal tiger. tiger. Okay. That's right. So, and it's, it's cold, yeah, okay. you know. To us, it's cold, right. and we've, you know, we're bundled up in yeah. that little thing with no top or yeah, anything, okay. you know, a little. Uh, and uh, so we just, I, I'm seeing animals I've never seen even in National Geographic, yeah, okay? okay? Right. I have never, ever, I mean, there were thousands, thousands of this and this, and, th and they didn't mix up either. Okay. And little <laughs> houses uh, where, little mud houses uh, where the door was cut out, the windows were cut out, but there was no door and no windows, okay? okay? And this is where the, um, uh, what we would call the uh, the people who worked there, okay. the men who worked yeah. there, you know? The games keepers. The games keepers, okay? Yeah. And their families. Okay. And their families. Okay. No windows, no doors, yeah. nothing. Okay? And my mind is creating all kinds and of pictures. And it's getting late. There. Oh, it's getting late. And uh, so about midnight... We 
are in the middle of this huge jungle and we and the and it stops and each each time each branch it hit me I'm I'm thinking about a Bengal tiger okay and uh, so it stops and we're at our destination and there is a platform that must have been about 20 by 20 okay, okay. and it was about two feet high okay. and it was called a temple okay and there were women there were a half a dozen women okay. in their uh, white cotton saris um, and there were a half a dozen babies there okay babies crawling yeah the oldest was couldn't been more than two but mostly they were babies and they were naked okay now you know what I just stood there and and I thought I'm in the twilight zone yeah First of all, it's cold. Yeah, okay. We've all yeah. got, you know, winter yeah. jackets on and we're cold. Yeah. These women have the white saris on and they are gentility and beauty in itself. Yeah. And the babies are crawling around um, and and my mind was going, those babies should be in their little PJs. Yeah. They should be in bed. They should be out here. They should be in bed. Yeah. They should have those little comfy, warm things yeah, with their feet yeah, covered yeah, and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That zip up. That zip up. <laughs> yeah, like this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And they're yeah. not. not. Yeah. And they're so having so much fun. Yeah. And the women are so gracious and beautiful. Yeah. And they brought us some little candies that Egypt is, uh, e India, India yeah. Egypt next time. Yeah. E e India is, you know, noted for. So they're waiting for you. Oh, they're these waiting people. for yeah, us. And so you in, pull their, out, in their temple yeah. in the center so, because yeah. they live in there. Okay. They live in those houses without any doors or windows yeah. in them, you know. And my brain is just going, whoo, 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 yeah. you know, there's something, uh, yeah. something Wrong. Strange, strange here. Yeah. yeah. But it was the spirit of it, you know, calmed all of my anxiety and my friends and and to babies were so happy and so pleased to see us and but you know, this was this was a lesson. Okay. It was an incredible lesson, lesson yeah. that you know, even though my babies had to be in their little comfy cuddles and had to be in a bed at a certain time yeah. and get up a certain time yeah. and had and um and I was, my friends and I were cold and yeah, yeah. teeth chattering. Yeah. And they're walking around like it's yeah. Miami in the summer, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking, this has got to be a mind thing. Okay. Okay? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That was, it was, it was, it was a cold. shock. Yeah. It was cold. It was a shock. Yeah. And I'm thinking, those babies live out here in the middle of this. Yeah. Of this Jungle. place. Yeah. So, anyway, we couldn't... Um, uh, say anything because we as I said we didn't know any Hindi we couldn't say hey uh, we didn't couldn't start <laughs> preaching you know and trying to convert them and trying to tell them honey this is not right okay yeah, that's right but it was such an incredibly beautiful uh, experience uh -huh. and so I got some uh, my brain wiring readjusted okay. and and thinking you know everybody doesn't think alike everybody doesn't okay. act alike yeah and it's okay. all your mind my okay. mind said it's March it's got to be cold. Oh, yeah. Those women didn't have that yeah. American clock in yeah. their head, you know. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> we had a wonderful time with these with these women okay. and these and these babies. Okay. So we have to go back uh, to uh, to the entrance, you know. And there's a little light. So how long did you stay there? You were there at midnight. We were there at midnight. Midnight. Yeah. Yes. And and uh, we're. Uh, miles now into the desert, into, into the, the jungle, jungle. Yeah. and so we have to go back. I mean, you know, yeah. it's nighttime. We got to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, right? that's right. We're that's, Americans. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We want got to go to bed. <laughs> that's right. So we, uh, they had taken our luggage uh, into a little a wooden like barracks that had okay. like three rooms, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, um, so we get back there and. Uh, we go in near the entrance of the it, uh, yeah. The entrance. We okay. go back. We go and right. we're going to that little uh, those that little room yeah. that we had, and um, and soon as we got in there, then the man the men came back again, and says, uh, takes our hands. The three of you, come with me. He said that in Hindu, so we just went. You know. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, we figured that's, yeah, that's what, what he was he saying because he grabbed our luggage yeah. and we were following the luggage, yeah. okay? So we go out and we get in this Jeep again and we go back <laughs> no. into the de- into the jungle. Oh, no, and I, oh my God, yeah, you know, going? where are we going this it's time? It's darker and later. You know where we went? Where? To the Maharani's palace. <laughs> I mean, again, we're, we're, got, we're trying to get our luggage from them, you know. Oh, yeah. We're pushing the river, the river. okay? Yeah. And but, but we don't know how, and, and all of a sudden, and You're no. out of control. You're out totally of, out of control. Out, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't know where you are, where you're going, no. and you end up at the palace. At the palace, at the Maharani's <laughs> palace. I've never seen rooms so high. They must yeah. have been 24 feet up there yeah, yeah. with mirrors yeah. that clear up to the ceiling. Yeah. And incredible. Yeah. But that was one of my <sighs> don't push the river okay. experiences, experiences, okay? <clears throat> Boy. <laughs> sort of a, it, it, it's like a, a shock into a dimension where you have no control. Well, you know, when they started talking about a paradigm shift is coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. People didn't even know what, what a, a paradigm, paradigm was. was. But everything was, I had one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I thought, right. oh my God, this is that paradigm shift, yeah. they said, because my whole culture is yeah. not the only one yes. there is. Yeah, okay. The, this one is so very yes. beautiful. Yeah, all right. Oh my God. You were tossed in. Yeah, and no time. Yeah. You know, I have to have a watch that yeah. works. Yeah. No, no time, yeah. no clock, wow. no nothing. Yeah. And it was all about what, uh, again, what Jesus said, mm. be still and know mm. that I am God. Now, what he was saying yeah. was, <laughs> now, Jesus knew, you know, yeah. I, I am God. Yeah. And what he's telling us is, be still and know that I am okay. God that's in, in you. you. In yes. you. It's there too. And so it's been, it's sad yeah. that for 2,000 <sighs> years, the lesson of the gentle master uh, who gave us the rules and laws of life uh, have been so misinterpreted. And we have says now, uh, I am God, okay? And he, this is true. But he was saying that same God that is within you. But as he has said, and I have a beautiful channeling of his, where he says, my simple truths have been so distorted and have held uh, uh, people hostage yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Betty, it reminds me of that parlor game where we're all sitting in a room and somebody whispers something in the ear of the person next to them. <laughs> and what it ends and up. What it up. Now, at the front of that line was Jesus. Yes. All right? Yes. Okay? Yes. And he whispered into the ear of the person next to him, you are God. That's right. Okay, now. That's right. We're at the end. Right. And what we hear is, you're a sinner. You're a sinner. <laughs> that's right. And that's exactly what he says. You know, uh, my friend, Bart, our, our friend, yeah, yeah, Bart yeah. Balsamo, is yeah. writing that book. Yeah. And uh, we were t talking about it yesterday, and he said, Betty, uh, you know, that yeah. dear, sweet man. Yeah, yeah. And he said, you know, the most beautiful words I have ever read is that channeling from Jesus. Mm. Uh, that he was talking about how his simple message became yeah, so distorted, distorded and has held people prisoner, you know, to, uh, to guilt of sin and, uh, and, uh, and salvation. And, and like he said, Spirit, like Jesus said, you know, you're gods. Yeah. He didn't say you're sinners. He said you're, you're gods. gods. So it's really time for this new, yeah. you know. Well, it's been 2,000 2000 years, Betty, hasn't it? 2,000 years, and I think probably, you know, it's, it's time. Thank you. That's Thank you. why, that's why 11 o'clock every Sunday at the Temple of Universality, corner of Prince and Country Club, all we have is the truth. All we speak is truth. All we hear is truth. And it's about time. And it's from the spirit world itself. Yes. Uh -huh.